What is going on, everybody? We're here. We're live. Hopefully, we'll be live over on Rumble. That's the only reason we were late, because Rumble's being a cock-sucking bitch this morning. Wouldn't want to <laughs> fucking load. Wouldn't want to let me set up the stream. Wouldn't want to let me do anything, these fucking bastards. But hopefully, I don't know. We'll see. If it doesn't work, I, it doesn't work, and it can go fuck itself. Yeah. So we're here on YouTube. What's I was up, here for, Jay? I was here for moral support while Ryan was trying to get it to work. That's about it. Hey, it's a Monday. You celebrated 300K. Holy crap, dude. Yeah, it's true. How's that Three, feel, man? How's that feel? Um, it feels fine. I took the day and felt happy about it, and then it was back to business as usual. Um, so, yeah, it's it's awesome. It was well, nice it's already gone, right, because I'm at 301,000 now. So that nice round number is over. We've moved on from that moment. We can go about the rest of our lives. But, yeah, it's pretty cool, though. It's cool. It is. Next up, 350. That's true. Well, next up, 302,000. Well, and then we'll celebrate saying, 303, like, and then we'll celebrate 304. We'll just make it a celebration, 100 celebrations to 400K. Why not? why not, man? Just let it fly. You never know. Uh, Dan Vasque <laughs> says, I'm missing Sweeney on the thumbnails. That Bye, was Dan. last week. That was last week, unless she does something this week. Well, I guess she doesn't really have to do anything. <laughs> just it's stand funny there. Like, I typically try to put like really ugly things on the thumbnails yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like that that's typically what i do josh brolin thumbnail to this day is still my favorite uh to this day the one that's just like i'm gay or whatever i want i want to fuck you i want to fuck you <laughs> i laughed so hard bro i didn't even i didn't even watch the video yet i was like what the freak is this man oh dude it was perfect yeah i was perfect. like I, I needed something kind of outrageous because it wasn't a super sexy video so it was basically what he said in that poem i know it was great that that was my favorite i'm surprised it didn't get flagged or anything didn't get the like the yellow it's dollar sensitive. sign i think kind of sensitive but yeah i guess so with the star you can put curse words in uh you can put censored curse words in thumbnails with that little asterisk yeah mm -hmm. okay. i do it a lot trust me i know i, I noticed but every <laughs> once in a while i will forget to actually censor it and I live like won't even notice, and I'll just put it out there, and then like ten hours later, I'll get a no I'll get a notification that's been like limited. Yeah, like what the, the yellow... fuck? It's like oh well, it's because Zachary Levi is saying I'm fucked, and yeah. I didn't censor it. <laughs> yeah. Got it. I understand now. Yeah, the yellow, the yellow mark of doom. The yellow mark of doom. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty true. It's pretty much how it is, and your video just dies if you get that. You know what I've been getting recently is like weird copy claims from videos like five years old, like from some company in like Saudi Arabia. Uh, what what are they claiming? Like jingles or like uh, music from like a teaser trailer that I reacted to like years ago. It's kind of weird. You just kind of like, whatever, I'll just delete it. <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's very odd. I've got four last month for almost about four last month i think so very um, very odd usually if it's like if you react to something it'll say like warner brothers has claimed you're like okay that makes sense or sony disney walt disney pictures stuff like that but it's when it's like you know gregory from iran you know claimed the music so you're like what the heck Who's that? Who's Gregory? And why is he in Gregory Iran? from Saudi Arabia yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so for anybody that might be over here because you can't watch it on Rumble, I, I don't know what's going on. Rumble's just not fucking working. So it's not our fault. It's their fault. Um, exactly. It is what it is. We'll be back there tomorrow, I guess. Steven DeLeon for two. Let's talk games. All right. Let's do it. We're here to talk. I got to make that today. a t-shirt. Apparently, everybody wants it on a t-shirt. Slacking. Lod gifts a membership. Thank you, Lod. Tobias is here. Gives five Geeks and Gamers memberships. What for a living to buy us i'm curious spends uh, a lot of money here which, I, which i'm very grateful but as a furry you know i don't think he's a furry at his job probably, he's probably oh, just that's like too a, bad i That'd think kind of cool i, I don't tell me don't tell works me I in like, like it or customer service or yeah. something that's what i think I, I think he's like an owner of like a major company uh, i don't think so <laughs> i'm 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 pulling for you tobias 
I set my expectations like reasonably, <laughs> Tobias. Uh, lower Lips Liquor with five memberships. Licensed Pussy Liquor. <laughs> I like that. Uh, JPG becomes a channel member. Thank you, JPG. The heck, is that the Illuminati you got there as your avatar? It's the three-faced god of uh, Hindu, whatever. Oh, salute. I'm I'm just guessing for the emperor for one nine nine, the acolyte trailer removed my dislike. Well, wow, that's crazy. It, it didn't do too much damage overall because it's sitting over a half a million dislikes. So Jeez. maybe it was just a glitch. I don't know if the trailer actually removed your dislike. Bush and Ryu cat for two one nine nine equals how many comeovers Ryan does for his perfect hair. Zero. I, I, you know what I did? I woke up. That's it. <laughs> I put a hat on. I woke, woke up, up and like, and this is what it is. So usually the Monday Monday routine for me is wake up. I send Ryan a text. Hey, yeah, I, I ignore couple, it. Yeah, I got a couple topics. If you're interested, then I see the thumbnail and title, and he's not interested. But hey, I'm trying. You know, I, I at least I at least I make an effort. And then well, when to be we, fair, then you we, sent me a message <laughs> after I'd already created the stream, right? Uh today I did. I don't think I did today. Mm hmm. Well, that's then that's my fault. I mean, I agree. It is your fault. Yeah, that's um, my fault. Yeah, but that's, that's usually how it goes for me on Mondays. Just kind of like I got some extra stuff if, you, if you're interested with no response. So I'm hoping that maybe I don't know. I see it. I just don't feel the need to respond to you and say, OK, or whatever. I'll <laughs> see. I'll see you in 45 minutes after you message me anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I see it. Just don't know if we want to talk about it. Although there is a couple things. There's some popcorn buckets we got to talk about. Yeah. No Dune popcorn buckets, but Master Bader for two. Sweeney's so hot, she turned Dan Vasque straight. Mm. <laughs> um, PVC Pipe Man for five. Jay, if God said you could create one free swear, which one would you say? Uh, I like the S word. That's a good word. Shit. Yeah, that's a good one. That Tobias was a, for 10. That was a freebie. I'd do that. So um, I could if I was in the children's unit, but technically I work for the state. I work for a state funded organization that helps disabled and special needs people find work, housing, etc. There you go. Jay, now you know. Thank Are you, you okay? for your transparency. What's so funny? <laughs> I just thinking like a you show up and I need a place to live and there's a furry behind the desk saying I've got the best place for you to go. I just went somewhere I probably shouldn't have. That's all. So okay, that's, that's honorable work, sir. That's honorable I, work. Thank just you. Just for the record, I don't think Tobias wears a fursuit to his I, I don't job. think so either, but it's just kind of only on the internet. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, I guess it's that the job could be so stressful that you've got to you know, when you get home, you got a prairie around in a in a dog costume to kind of feel better about yourself. I don't know. All right, See, never mind. Let's Tobias, move on. I take you very seriously, and I think the work you're doing is very important, and I'm not going to make a mockery of it. Like I, I was. Jay. <laughs> How's that Star Wars trailer doing? <laughs> Thank her for two dollars. Put a mustache and sombrero on a headland. The taco light. <laughs> well, I'll think about it. <laughs> You fucked that bitch for one nine nine. <laughs> Why your membership so expensive? Um, I, I think it's only it five is. bucks. So you fucked that bitch. I think you can afford it. Um, Toge fan for one nine nine. Clicky clack. According to Ryan, I'm too gay now. <laughs> too look gay at that fan. car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Man, it has one of those blinking headlights, man. Jeez, when did they stop making those cars in the 90s? I had I had a 96 Saturn. Like, that was my first car that had fucking uh, yeah. lights that did that. Usually after and then like... I, and then I, then I fell asleep at the wheel and fucking drove into a tree and totaled it. But, you know, for a while it was an awesome car. Usually after three years, they break. So you see, like, one car going with one up and you're just driving. And then I've seen people, like, when they turn their lights, they have to walk outside and just pull the other one up just for ride so many fucking problems with that car like a saturn yeah yeah like i would 
at one point in time, some there was some electrical connection that was really fucked up between, uh, I don't know if it was between the battery or the alternator or not, but occasionally, just as I was driving, the car would fucking shut off, right? And then I'd like try to restart it, try to restart it, wouldn't work. It's eventually, I'd like coast to a stop. I'd have to get out, pop the hood, and just pull up on one of the connections on the battery, and the car would it, the it would get fucking power again, and I could actually start it back up. God, but Saturns were so it, popular at one they point were. in time in our history. You couldn't dent they- it though. I know that you. It was one of those. You remember those commercials where they were just fucking try to dent it and you couldn't. That's how that car was pushing the uh, grocery cart up up into the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hideaway lights. Someone. Well, says. they came hideaway and lights. went. Right, that company went out of business. Correct, or did they sell it? I don't know. I think they got bought up at some bought point out, by yeah. somebody, but okay. I, I don't exactly know. But yeah, I don't think they're making any new Saturn. No Saturn have for a long time. For a long time. Um. But Jay, we have you'd sent me because I actually pay attention to what you said. I know you even do. if I don't respond. Uh you sent some interesting uh it looks like Disney's doing everything they can to generate some interest in Star Wars at Disneyland through yes. the use of food and collectible popcorn buckets. Now, I don't even, think these are gonna be like the Dune popcorn bucket in popularity, but no. Well, I don't know. Um, you want me to share it? Share yeah, all that stuff? Hundred percent. So Obviously, they see that the acolyte is not doing too well, so they're they're gonna do everything in their power to try to pump interest back into Star Wars. So over at Disneyland in California, they're offering uh, they're gonna be doing a month worth April. Oh, almost uh, yeah, about a month, two months guide uh, to the. Uh, let's see, it's called. Oh, I'm all screwed up. Season of the Force. That's what it's called. So it's going to be a season of Star Wars over at Disneyland. Now, they're not offering this over in Orlando. And I, I kind of sent a message to a few people that I know that work over there. I was like, why are they not doing it over here in Orlando? And one of the responses was, I don't think there's that much interest. <laughs> it's like as big of interest as it is maybe over in Disneyland, which I was like, that's kind of shocking. But uh, yeah, so they're, they're doing all kinds of things for the season of the force well that sounds like a bad porn movie anyway they're gonna have like fireworks with john williams music the only time you'll hear john williams music in a star wars land owned by disney which is crazy um they're gonna add the mandalorian and ahsoka to star tours that classic ride where you could like you know ride through the death star and all that stuff they're gonna change it to uh mando and ahsoka i don't even know what this is but uh, they've got new merch where you could buy a Star Tours jacket and shirt. I know you want one of those, Ryan. I'll make sure to pick that up. They yeah, also yeah. have a they also have a new Star Wars cookie, you know, because that's looks good. And uh, some incredible new photo op opportunities that might cost you up to ninety nine dollars just to do. So there's that. So, but on top of that. They've also announced. Is it just they, like is it just like the cast of the acolyte that did all these photo ops? It might be. <laughs> Can you scroll down a little bit. It might be. Okay, I'm just wondering. It seems it's, seems strange to me. It's but. it's possible, but they've introduced a uh, Jabba the Hut popcorn bucket. Look at this bad boy right here with the little the little crumb man right next to it. Salacious B. Yeah. And uh, the holes in the back, I think. <laughs> what, like, if you're gonna do a popcorn bucket with with him, I feel like you should make his fucking mouth open up. And maybe that is. Uh, I'll scroll down. But they they're also offering a. Uh, they call it the salvage stormtrooper helmet bucket. So you can get a stormtrooper helmet. I guess that was found in the garbage because it was salvaged. It's probably Ezra Bridger's. Yeah, and then yeah. It, they fill it with popcorn that you could walk, which which are there's they're they're definitely not very practical to walk around, especially like people that have big beer guts, and then they got that thing around, and now they've got like another bubble in front of them that's uh poking out. But oh, it is his mouth. Oh, okay, there you go. Bad. Good. The hole was in the back. Good I idea, apologize. Disney. That's what I would do too. Fake false news on my part. I thought the hole was in the back. Most of their popcorn buckets, it's the back that that pops open, not the mouth. So, yeah, so, yeah. I, I feel like is Salacious B Crumb still attached to this? Uh, I don't see it. No, scroll up just a touch. 
Right there. So you see him? I think he's on like the go down just a touch. Oh, there he is right yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like a keychain extra. Looks like it. There it is from the original. Oh, yeah, it's a clip on. So you get the little clip on there so he could walk around. Uh, but yeah, so they're pushing that pretty, pretty heavily. So you can get one of the two popcorn buckets. That'll probably be 30 bucks. And uh, that's, you know, especially the uh, the big people in Disney. That'll be great. And also, I didn't know, like, I'm sure you know this already. Oh, shoot. I stopped sharing yeah. like like an idiot. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's It's a Monday. If you go into the cantina, you now can be served with all the old Star Cruiser glasses that they didn't know what to do with. So now the Galactic Star Cruiser is, uh, and it's only, they shipped them out to Disneyland. So during the season of Force, you could use the Star Cruiser glasses. How's that? Pretty neat. Um, so season of Force is, what is it, just all through May? Yeah, and also, I, I know you know this as well, is that you can go to the theater during the season of Force and watch a Star Wars marathon. Now, if you go to Fandango to get your tickets, it's reported that this marathon is 20 hours and 22 minutes that you could sit in the theater and catch every, every, all every nine, scene, all right? nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, imagine, like, what's that theater going to smell like if one dude stays in there eating, you know, hot dogs, popcorn, nachos with cheese for 20 hours. And that's just going to you know? be on uh, May 4th, right? It's just a one day, it's like, just an, a idiot, one day thing, like yeah. an idiot. I didn't share my screen. So there we go. But yeah, it's the uh, 20 hours and 22 minutes. I don't know what the tickets are yet. Like they haven't released a price, but um, you know, there, there you have it. May that, that's a long Saturday. ass fucking time, man. That's a long yeah, ass 20 fucking time hours, day. dude. That's yeah, like, especially I, I would do Listen, I'd do it for six. I wouldn't do it for nine. I got to stay there and watch Force Awakens last year at Rise of fucking Skywalker. You can be half of that theater is going to walk out after the first six are done. Like, you can't convince me that people are going to that that everybody's going to stay and watch the last three. I think some people might go and watch like a the cut. Yeah, like a couple of their favorites. Like, oh, I'll see Phantom Menace. All right, I'll be back for you know, Empire Strikes Back, and then I'm done. But you also, Ryan, but listen, just to seal the deal, you also get this special poster right here. That looks really boring. <laughs> if you buy a ticket, you can get this special poster. I, so I, what I think what would make more sense for them to do is to um, do like one a day. Like do it, do it a special, so. you know what I mean? I don't know. But. I agree completely. I think I think it should be uh, absolutely that. Um, you know, like or or one every weekend, like yeah, one, one every Saturday. Yeah, so or something that, like that's that. That's kind of what I meant. Is like one every weekend for fucking two months, basically. And I don't know who's going to go back to watch Last Jedi: Rise of Skywalker: Force Awakens. That's but. probably why they don't want to do it because they might be embarrassed that the originals would probably make a probably would make them money. And then if they re-release The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, it'd be like, nobody's going to see that. And they don't want another embarrassment uh, like we're seeing with this trailer. One last thing, too. If you want Padme Amidala ears, it's also for the season of Force that you can get. They're going back to the classics. Another cast member for the Acolyte. They got a lot is. of them here. Well, it's, you know, the, 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 the main thing is, is that they 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 won't put the acolyte ears out or anything like that. It's got to go back to, you know, some of the classic stuff, but Hey, here we are. So are you excited for the season of force, Ryan? Um, yes, <laughs> I'm super excited for the season of force. And it looks like we are now working on rumble. So oh, what, nice. whatever problem was going on with rumble, it's fixed. So if you were over here just watching for a little bit, you should be able to go back to Rumble. If somebody sent me a big enough super chat, I'd go to that marathon and like vlog it. <laughs> you can see me going miserable, miserable. Um, I mean, I, if you had to stay there, I'd just sleep for the last three. I think you could manage that. It all depends you sleep on how the bad that before. theater might smell. That's the only thing I could think of. And then bathrooms will be backed up too. I imagine there's a little fucking intermission after each. Where they come in and clean. 
Uh, I don't know if they clean, but I think they're going to come in and like, or you're going to be able to take a piss. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure it's not back to back. But I mean, speaking of the acolyte, we got a, we had a lot of super chats to catch up with, which we will yeah. get to. But speaking of the acolyte, we have to, we have to update everybody on this because as Disney themselves said on StarWars.com, the Acolyte trailer's breaking records. It's just so incredible, so <laughs> stunning, so brave. It's breaking records. More people in the first 24 hours watched it than any other Disney Plus series, according to these very specific metrics. Unfortunately, that's not the record that people are really concerned with. The record that people are really looking at is that this is the first Star Wars trailer in history to have more dislikes than likes. And it's just, it's not just by a little bit, not just edging out on the dislikes. No, we have passed half a million dislikes on something that's been watched 9 million times. 177,000 upvotes to half a million plus downvotes. It is an evisceration. And of course, you've got people doing everything they can to defend it. DEI is not why Star Wars is getting worse. Star Wars fans complaining about Leslie Headland's upcoming Disney Plus series, The Acolyte, are mad about the franchise for the wrong reasons. And every time we hear something from a cast member or the showrunner or whatever, it, it, the backlash continues to get worse. I'm shocked at how much this, uh, this number is. I thought it was going to be heavily disliked. I thought it was going to be a toss-up whether it got ratioed or not. This is like the Marvel's level of hatred from people. Oh, it's bad. And if that's any clue, uh, we saw what happened with the Marvels in terms of interest level. If that holds true with this, it's going to be an unmitigated disaster. Well, it doesn't, I mean, they're, she's, they're not helping their case. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something real quick. Um, when you have headlines like this, uh, we explain why we have writers that have never seen Star writers in freaking Hollywood that has never seen a Star Wars film. Like that's who you want putting this show together. Like really, and and she went on the you know she went on the defensive, and they're like, oh, we just want a perspective. The writer that they hired in this article, which was uh, I think it was put out on uh, Variety actually, and and CBR just took like clips of it. In this article, they said that the writer that has never seen Star Wars, she goes, I've heard of it. I think there's a dog in there. And and she was talking about Chewbacca, I believe, like space yeah. balls, like barf, right? So, and and that's who they want working on these Star Wars shows. So you wonder why, <laughs> I, you can't help but wonder why nobody cares about this stuff. Also on top of it, this is the High Republic series. The High Republic uh, is not like the best seller, uh, just you know people just don't nobody knows what it. it is right the like a, a handful of people were you know wondering what it was going to be like it comes out the first book sells okay um but from then on everyone abandoned it for the Here, can i show no, you normal star wars fans don't know what the high republic is like they have no fucking idea when it popped up in fallen order most people had no idea what the fuck it was and now you have this yes yeah, so there's Geode, which is a co-pilot. But here are the uh, here's like the sales numbers. Like you said, the first one uh, did uh, according to these numbers that are available that you can find. Um, let, let's just go by here. These are these are uh, soft cover, hard cover. So it's like uh, 120 thousand for the first one, and they just keep plummeting. They just get worse and worse. And where this book only sold seven thousand, this one five. This book only sold three thirty six hundred. Right. Now, and to, then they, and to, to, to be clear, that's not exactly like an apples to apples comparison. One of them, like those ones, I believe, are like children's books or like I, exactly. Like but youth, I'm saying it's a books. Star yeah, Wars yeah, yeah. book. It's a Star right, Wars right. book. So if you want to compare like the first book. Right. So one hundred and twenty thousand up here and then you go into phase two. Right. The next one in the series, it drops to twenty thousand. So if you were to compare those two, those are the two that you would compare because it's the same style, the same as it's yeah, not yeah. the uh, children's book. It's not the reference book. It's not the comic book or anything. So that's a big drop. In this article here, it talks about that the High Republic series dropped a whopping 90 percent of, of interest from the first. Here it is. This is a 90, 95 percent drop in sales between the launch of Light of the Jedi and the current High Republic no uh, novels in barely over two years. This article also shows like some of the uh, the writers like at Comic Cons. This was like a, a year ago, I believe, and how they were saying like um, not one person came up for an, <laughs> for a signed book 
over at the Dragon Con book convention. They just kind of sat there watching everybody else get their books signed. And The High Republic was also a series where Lucasfilm, and please correct me if I'm wrong, where Lucasfilm felt like they that's where they're going to push a lot of their, like, non-binary jedis and gay jedis and trans jedis and all that so you remember the uh non-binary jedis that they pushed the twins the twins Um, i remember them so it's like yeah they look like star wars theory and so uh, like um yeah they pushed all that nonsense into that they promoted characters like here's a pilot he's an asexual pilot of the vessel it's like they just constantly promoted that like you, we, we wanted to know their pronouns, wanted to know what type of sexuality they were, and they shoved it all in the High Republic. Now we have the Acolyte, which is a High Republic series, which takes place a hundred years before Phantom Menace, which for most people are like, that's really stupid because, you know, Darth Maul, at last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. And the Sith are supposed to be in hiding, whatever. Um, I guess Yoda will, maybe he's alive, walking around doing his thing so maybe yoda will make an appearance i'm sure but it hey, was jabba the hut alive do you think jabba did, it would have those... been alive yeah he would have been alive chewbacca would have been alive so so even... how, how old is jabba he's a couple hundred years old I so think maybe jabba died. might make an appearance as a young slug trying to make his way through the galaxy to take over <laughs> yeah he was about he was about 600 years old when he died um in return of the jedi so hey he's 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 alive kicking just yeah. fucking slugging around everywhere. Yeah. That's it. You know, making it making a name for himself on Tatooine. So there's maybe they'll throw that in there. Maybe we'll get a, a young Chewbacca sighting. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm to put that in put, put that in perspective. Um, the Thrawn trilogy, the original Thrawn trilogy from the 90s, you're talking about 15 million copies somewhere around yeah. that sold. So to put that in perspective, the High Republic, this massive, and there was more marketing behind High Republic than any fucking book release we've ever seen. And uh, you had to get, what, 150,000 combined copies for the first book? Yes. A little rough. It's a little rough. And that was their bestseller. That was it. Everything else, everything under that. That was, was the one book that I read, Light of the Jedi or whatever the yeah. fuck. Yeah. Uh, Christian Rocker for 199 I'll buy your Ghostbusters popcorn bucket, Jay. Did you get one, Ryan? No. I didn't go to a fancy theater. Oh, that's yeah, I, cool. I drop. Yeah, like, I want so, one of those Slimer ones. So like this, this piece goes in here. Like you open it up and it lights up. And when I went into the theater, I dropped this, and it like fell off. And I was like, "Oh my god, I broke it already!" Like the first five minutes. Then they're like, "No, no, no, it comes apart." So yeah, mm, there anyway. you go. You want to buy this? I wonder what you what would you what would you send me for it? Two box to sign it. Sorry, Ryan. I've interrupted you twice now. I'll shut up. Uh, two box baby leg for two says Sweeney summoned me. <laughs> Look at those eyes on two box. <laughs> Shaky owns for one nine nine. My first car was a ninety six Saturn SC two. Hell yeah, Master Bader. I heard Sweeney at the Glad Awards got people mad. I don't actually think she did. I think that's that Sydney Sweeney's being used by people that just clickbait bullshit for Twitter ad revenue. Personally, um. Master Bader for two. The back is where Jay wanted the hole to be. Of Java. It's usually where it is on all their on all of Disney's popcorn buckets. So I took a chance and guessed I was wrong. Bush and Rye, you cat for two. Can't wait to see the popcorn bucket for Magic Mike two. Isn't there like already been three or four Magic Mike movies? I don't know. I have no information on that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the popcorn bucket will look like for that. Spider Unlimited for 199, The Acolyte, a Star Wars story by Fred Flintstone. Leslie Headland does kind of have a Fred type of face. Pretty square. Um, crazy Clown Town for two Saturn was bought by GM. That's what I thought. Uh, okay. I figured something like that. Ministry of Wrong Thing for five. Give me that job a bucket. Extra butter. Hold the popcorn. <laughs> well, you could its mouth opens up. It does. <laughs> Lord of the Re member for a month. I thought the hole was in the back. Jay, the Kataka light. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, the Gilk Man. What's up, Thomas? Good to see you, buddy. Um, Mikey Gussler for 10. Happy eight-year anniversary to Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. The Ultimate Editions is the only true edition of the film and one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. In some ways, it feels like it's been longer than eight years. Um, like soon you say only eight years, it kind of seems like 
it feels like a like a lifetime ago. But thank you, Mikey. Eight years. Frank the Tank, member for nine months. Ryan, now compare the Star Wars books to Brandon Sanderson's current campaign. Hail the one nine nine. I have no idea how many books he's selling. Um, let me look. Brandon uh, Sanderson crowd fun. Let me see if I can find it because I don't. I don't remember where it was. Was it backerkit.com? Was that it? Let me see. I have no uh, idea. God. All right. So $20 million uh, and 84,000 backers. And there's four days left for a crowdfunded Brandon Sanderson campaign. Let me show you. Um. Now, I don't know how many books are sold. I can only tell because I don't know if mul people bought multiple ones or whatever. But there you go. Words of Radiance, Leather Bound by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, the second in Brandon Sanderson's epic series, The Stormlight Archive, arrives in Leather Bound. $20 million. He launched this like a month ago. $20 wow, fucking man. million, dollars, 84,000 backers. Um. I have no idea how many books they sold, but that's a lot. That's a fucking lot. That's a beautiful book. Yeah. Um, I wonder how much it is actually. God, it's a lot. It's expensive. I'm gonna have something uh similar when the pirate book drops. There you go. It's gonna be kind of neat. That's not till the end of the year, though. Gung Ho Mac for 14 months. I prefer Star Wars writers who haven't seen Star Wars, steakhouse chefs who haven't had meat, pilots who haven't flown, and surgeon who faints at blood. 100%. Yeah, she talked about that's the thing, the, the whole writer hasn't seen Star Wars. She bragged about this like over a year ago. Yeah. Like when the thing was still in development, we started to learn a little more about it. She was so happy to have people that had no idea what Star Wars was working on Star Wars. Uh, but. I just find it we like I just find it weird. You're a writer in Hollywood and you have never, never seen, seen Star a Star Wars. Wars film. Like I mean they're on like TNT all the time. Like you know what I, it's like I don't you, listen, I don't believe for half of these people like you know especially these people that do reactions be like my first time watching Star Wars and it's some fucking like whore yeah. in the thumbnail. I have, I think they're fake and I don't believe it. How could you have gone this long without seeing Star Wars? I don't buy it. I think it's all fake bullshit. I should do reviews. one. I should do one of those videos. It might help my channel. You could try. <laughs> my first time. <laughs> my first time watching Star Wars, and people would be like, you know, I see it. I, I believe it. <laughs> After all the videos and live streams he's done, he's finally he's finally watched a New Hope. Um. Thank you, Gung Ho Mac. Take her for two Tatooines. Hottest new rapper, Young Slug. <laughs> He's definitely a gangster. Funny. He's a gangster rapper. That would be so. Uh, Lil Jabba. The Huts are gangsters. It was said so in the movie. Uh, Tobias Nexus for five. I'm reading Dark Harvest, and it's a way better Sith story than anything Lucasfilm can make. Zombie Sith alchemy taking place in a Sith temple. Dark Harvest is okay. Uh, if you're looking for like horror. Uh, Star Wars, I think the Death Troopers is a little better, although I kind of hate some of the characters that are involved in it. Not because I hate those characters, but I hate the fact that characters we know are involved in it, because then you already know their fate, that they're going to be perfectly fine. So, uh, CM Chunk, member for 10 months. <laughs> Jay, don't pretend like you don't own the Magic Mike trilogy on 4K. <laughs> the last thing that I bought was uh, Black Sails. Bought black sales. Accident seller <laughs> for 20. No fap, no gluten. Nine fap, nine gluten, one nine nine. Thank you for the $20. Sir Hat for two. I've dated multiple women who never saw Star Wars. Mm. Every once in a while you're running them, but like if you have like a fucking YouTube channel where you talk movies or whatever, I find it hard right. to believe. But that, that's right. the thing for me. If you have an active presence online, a channel where you talk about movies and you're telling me you've never watched Star Wars, it's really hard for me to buy it, especially when you see some of them getting massive fucking views. Um, I just think they're lying. Master Bader for two. Stuttering Craig hasn't seen Lord of the Rings. That's really fucking gay. 
Yeah, <laughs> there's no other way around it. That is it. God. Um. All right, where am I? Over on Rumble, Switzerland, play IT for a buck. Ryan, I'm in the States. I can shave your head for free, you fig. Nah, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen, although I do need a haircut. Uh, maybe I'll get one before Vegas, but my, he- my side of my head's getting fuzzy, you know? Yeah, kinda... no one likes a fuzzy head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it's getting to the point where, like, I get this fucking cowlick and shit. It sucks. Yeah. That's that's why Jay puts a hat on. Yeah, it's awful. This is this, this is like non bathed Jay for a while. Mine so. could be worse. You know what I mean? Mine could be worse. You've had some bad ones where you had like the alfalfa, like for some reason. Like no what I, every you, one every once in a while there'd be like Did you ever uh, feel like you just want to just cut it off? All my hair? <clears throat> no, like if you had like that alfalfa that just wouldn't that one little cow tail that just won't cooperate. Uh, no, I've never thought off. about cutting it. All right. No, never that's me. I, that's why I wear a hat. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Where the fuck? I lost. I completely lost you, Jay. I can't even see you. I lost your tab. Oh, here you are. Sorry. Um, sometimes you got so many fucking tabs going on and you lose it. And I couldn't find the stream yard. Uh, Jeff K. Member for 27 months. Happy Monday. So I found out I share a birthday with Krista. Is it Krista's birthday today? Uh, it is Krista's birthday today. That's right. There you go. Happy birthday, Krista. And uh, happy birthday, Jeff K. Um, how old are you, Jeff? Let us know. Um, I did want to talk about something else, though. Um, get that out of here. Get that out of here. I got too many fucking tabs. All right. Here we go. And we, we got to talk about Nelson Peltz a little bit because he uh, he had an interesting statement that started to catch a lot of traction over the weekend. Um, let me pop this up. Obviously, Nelson Peltz, for the better part of the last year, has been advocating for changes at Disney, changes the way they do business. He's asking for himself and former Disney employee Jay Rasulo to be on the board for Disney to help turn things around. Now, he's reiterated he's not looking to fire Bob Iger or anything like that. He simply wants to be there to help him. But I couldn't help but notice this headline the other day. Quote, why do I have to have another Marvel movie that's all women? (laughs) Billionaire slams woke Disney amid board proxy battle. I fucking love that. Billionaire investor Nelson Peltz, who's trying partners, owns roughly $3.5 billion in Disney has entered a fierce proxy fight to join the company's board. Sitting down at the Financial Times, Pelt slammed the DEI-driven entertainment company. Disney is stupid because I'm not trying to fire Bob Iger. I want to help him. We don't fire CEOs. Um, Disney, meanwhile, says Peltz has not presented a single strategic idea while campaigning for two years to secure board seats. Peltz hit back, telling the Times, they say we know nothing about the movie business. We don't claim we do, but I don't think they do with five big losers in a row. They've lost first place in animation. They've lost first place in features. Maybe it's time to change management in those divisions. And then this is my favorite. People go to watch a movie or a show to be entertained. They don't go to get a message. Elaborating further, Peltz asked, why do I have to have a Marvel movie that's all women? Not that I don't have anything, not that I have anything against women, but why do I have to do that? Why can't I have Marvels that are both? Why do I need an all black cast (laughs) referring to Black Panther? So Nelson Peltz straight up calling out Marvel for some of their fucking massive failures over the past couple of years. What do you think about that statement? This quote, why do I have to have another Marvel movie that's all women? Uh, I think he watches your YouTube channel, to be honest. I think he's a subscriber to the RK Outpost because basically he's just saying the same thing that all of us have been saying forever. (laughs) So that's it, it. It's crazy to me to think that that is one of the main reasons why they're afraid to have him on the board of directors. So he will ask questions like that. Uh, it, it th- this has been one of the most entertaining. I, I've never seen like Bob Iger, like some people on the board, so nervous and scared that one man is going to get on there and and see. I, I just again, I've said this a million times. I just think it's they don't want someone thumbing through their filing cabinet and seeing stuff that's in there 
So they're doing everything in their power. I, I, that's why they have all these weird people like coming out saying, I support Bob Iger in the proxy war. It's like just random. It's just it, freaking random. It, like they've devoted people. a lot of time, energy, money, and attention to making sure that Nelson Peltz doesn't get on the board. Yeah. And probably because they don't want to answer to stuff like that, where he's like, Yeah, we're we're doing another Marvel film with like a bunch of women. Well, why do I need to see that? That's why no one's going to see it. The numbers don't lie here. Bob, what are you doing? Yeah, I think that I, I've said from the beginning, I think it's highly unlikely that Nelson Peltz actually gets there. Um uh, they they did have a pretty big investment firm back then, um, so you know maybe maybe there's still a chance, but I I think it's in all likelihood it's not going to happen. But it has been interesting to see how scared Disney is of having somebody on the board that's not a yes man for Bob Iger. Exactly, uh, because that's that's the reality. And Nelson Peltz has pointed out a lot. These people don't have a lot invested. They don't hold a lot of Disney stock. They pretty much nope. just exist to let Bob Iger do whatever he wants and really never challenge. Yeah, so, they might expose who the real runners of Disney are, <laughs> not just the figurehead and Bob Iger. Well, so the real people, it sounds like you just got just you pulled up to shore, Jay. I heard a fucking ding. Uh it sounded like a it sounded like a bell on a ship. Sorry, on my phone. Okay. I, I, I thought the ringer was off. <laughs> <laughs> ding ding. Um, anyway, sorry. But yes, the, the real people that run Disney are probably all the uh, HR departments. Probably what it's like. I, um, it wouldn't surprise me if it was some fat person with blue hair, you know, that that uh, bought a bunch of Bitcoin when it was only a penny. And now they have so much F you money that they just want to change. But I'm enjoying the chaos, man. I'm enjoying the chaos. I, when I found out like BlackRock Company owns like so much Bitcoin, I was like, well, no wonder what's going on. No wonder. No wonder. It's all it's all conspiracy to me, man. It's all nothing's real. It's all fake. It's all an illusion. Everything is well. If uh, nothing's real and everything's fake, then anytime yeah. you say it, oh, it's a distraction. Well, then if nothing real, everything's fake. It doesn't matter. It's just a distraction. It's just Fucking, a distraction. That's what I was trying people, to get at. People, people will try to link anything. They yeah. Can it's do. all Illuminati, man. That's how it is. Um, Lance for 10 bucks. I can't wait for the final episode of the original series Star Grift. You were the MVP of the show and we're slowly swaying theory to accept the truth. Rest in ultimate power, Star Grift. That's today? Yeah, it'll be today. Um, I don't I don't think I was close to swaying him personally. Um, but maybe. Yeah, we're gonna I'm have sad. a last final episode of Star Grift. We'll have a couple reunion shows though. I just I, I just I got it so time. many fucking streams I already do. Just I yeah. don't have time for it every time week. management, man. Mm -hmm. Orangutan for 199. Padme bucket win. <laughs> I see myself out. <laughs> you know, I really did want to get uh I, I wish I could have gone to get the AMC Slimer bucket. Those yeah, that really one cool. looks pretty cool. Um, what did you think of the movie? I, I didn't hate it. Like I, I thought it was all right. I thought Afterlife was better, but not by much. So I, I enjoy. I had a good time. I, I gave it a six. I think in my review, it's definitely a movie you could probably wait till it's like comes out on streaming and just have a good time. But uh, I didn't. I, I didn't think it was terrible at all. I thought they took care of the nostalgia just fine. It was nice to see the older guys having a respectable role in the film. You know, oh my gosh. Why'd did you, you turn your again? fucking ringer off? You just said it. I did. I thought I did. Is that a pirate bell? What, what is that supposed to be? Yeah, some kind of sea bell. So cool. Um, yeah, I'm gay. Anyway, so the, uh, yeah, that's all. I didn't think it was like, I think it was terrible. I did. I really didn't like it. I didn't yeah. enjoy it. I think there was too many people involved. Like there were just too many fucking characters. Because uh, you, you got the original crew. Yeah. And you've got like Paul Rudd, his girlfriend. Or I don't even know if they're married or not. Yeah, they're married. He's Are they to married? Step, stepdad. Are they officially married? I thought they were. I wasn't. She did call him dad. So I guess they are. I guess I never even thought about that. But yeah, they're probably married. So you got Paul Rudd and his wife. You've got the random kind of older guy who runs the lab. By older, I mean like fucking maybe 30 yeah. or 40. And then you've got all the kids. And we mean podcast and whatever the black girl's name is and like the two kids. It's just there's too many fucking people involved. 
and the way they fix that at the end is they oh and you got uh firemaster himself right the guy yeah. from eternals you you got way too many fucking people involved in this that are supposed to be part of the story so i thought there's too much going on i thought that the final confrontation was a massive letdown this is this is a That's series that the ending was was weak ghostbusters so. has a massive fucking giant godzilla size stay puff marshmallow man uh, got, uh ghostbusters 2 has the fucking Statue of Liberty but walking the, through But the New York. first one, when they when they defeat the bad guy, they just cross the streams. Yeah. So there yeah, wasn't yeah. really like a massive fight. They just kind of were like, all right, let's just cross the streams and see what happens. And then that was the end of it. You know, they crossed the streams and things blew up. The state puff burned up. And, uh, you know, that was the end of it. I do like the, I think the state puff in the, but, but at least that one, they go up to the top of a fucking building true. and like all this shit. This one, t it ends in a fucking garage. I agree. I agree completely. It's in the, it's in the firehouse, right? Like that's just where it was. Yeah. And so. I don't know. I just, no, I, I didn't, I, like, I didn't enjoy people, it. I, I don't like wait. the, I don't like the kids characters. I don't like Phoebe. Uh, I think it was really weird. Her entire story that she would kill herself basically to I, I don't fucking know it's be just a ghost. So stupid and i i didn't enjoy it i That's didn't like I afterlife that much i thought it was meh and i like this one significantly less than afterlife That's i just I, yeah. don't think i need any more ghostbuster stories no man fucking I, be done with I, it, please. I think i think uh, i think somebody tweeted this out and i agree with it completely that ghostbusters and like jurassic park were these were films that could have been a one and done but because they were so successful, they just tried to squeeze, you know, as much <laughs> lemon out of that, you know, as much as they can. So those, those are the films that could have just been a one and done, honestly. I mean, I like the, the I like the Jurassic Park trilogy, the original ones. I thought that, that was done well. But as long as they kept making money, they were just going to keep making films. So and, and this film had a, like a really low budget. Right. It was like a hundred million dollars. So they they could have. They they could re they could probably make that back. So I it, think um this film's budget hundred million dollars. I think that it may break even. I don't think it's gonna yeah. be much more. If if that. Because you well, need about three hundred three hundred million dollars. That means it'll so. be the last one. Um how much did Ghostbusters Afterlife make? Uh I don't I think that's because that one made money. They decided to do another one. Didn't do the, the opening weekend are almost exactly the same. Here's the thing Ghostbusters Afterlife made $200 million worldwide. $200 fucking million. And the budget on that was $75 million. So they probably might have broken even, maybe. But this is a little bit after COVID shit, 2021. So I don't know. I don't know what. Um, if the budget's a hundred million dollars on Frozen Empire, which it probably is, there's significantly more effects details in this one than there was in Afterlife. Yeah, I don't see any way this thing makes fucking money. And as embarrassing as it is, both of these movies are gonna make less than 2016 Ghostbusters. Like that, that wow, that's in perspective, okay. Um, now that movie I think was significantly more expensive than Afterlife, so they probably may have lost more money, but um, let me see if I can find that one. Ghostbusters. Wow. I have no idea about that one. Yeah. Um, that's what, like, when everyone was praising Afterlife, I I didn't because I, I didn't think it was that good. But I also thought it should be pointed out that Ghostbusters 2016 made more mm -hmm. than Afterlife significantly. Did it have, like, a lower budget? I think so, but I'm, I'm trying to check. Yeah um i just think like I, again like in my review i was just kind of like it's whatever like I, you, people could wait until it's on tv yeah so the production this. budget was almost twice as much for ghostbusters 2016 almost 150 million dollars compared to 75 million and it made 229 million dollars at the box office so massive flop massive failure lost money but it's gonna end up with a higher box office run than afterlife and probably Frozen Empire if I if I'm betting on it right now. How is Dune doing? Because I didn't think that would make a billion. Nah, Dune's right now probably are around six hundred million or about to cross six hundred million this week. Um, I think it's probably going to end its run around seven seven twenty five somewhere around there.
So it'll make money, but not much. Um, I think 600 million was probably a break even point for the movie. It, I think budget was 180 or 190 million, but there's obviously a decent amount of money coming from international waters. So yeah, yeah. 600 mil is probably the break even point on the movie, but it didn't do that much better uh, in general. Interesting. It just, I don't know, man. A movie like that seemed to have captivated a lot of people and became yeah. a massive meme, and it was really in like the zeitgeist for a while. And it's probably going to end up making I, I, seven hundred twenty-five million dollars. It, it just, it could be. I mean, there's a lot of factors with the movies now. I'm, it's hard to say because we did have some billionaire billion-dollar movies last year, but people are just staying home. The economy's kind of crappy. Uh, <laughs> movies aren't very good, so it's just a pick and choose. You know when they want to go out yeah like just i'm wondering like how like the re-release of the phantom menace is gonna do you know if people like well you have to go. sit through fucking acolyte uh promotion to that's see it true. Apparently. That's, that's the thing man it's crazy well this is how disney's re-releases have been doing this is luca remember when disney announced they're going to be releasing pixar favorites that were streaming only because no one right. got to see them in theaters here's the results for that Half a million dollars on the weekend. Good Lord. For a movie that had never been put out domestically before. What a fucking failure. Wow. Um, but yeah, you can see Doom Part 2 back up to number two at the box office. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire at 45 mil. Kung Fu Panda. Holding on. How much did this movie fucking cost to make? I don't know what the budget is on this thing. $85 million budget. So you're looking at something that probably you know once it gets to 250 it's probably in the in the black ish now you know what i mean now that everything is going to be making money after this so do those movies do good in china kung the kung fu panda movies <laughs> i have no idea oh uh let's see kung fu. It's doing all right yeah they yeah, there it is. they like pandas in china right yeah they do and they like kung from? fu apparently. apparently i guess um Holden McGroin for two. Where's the new guy today? <laughs> I don't know. Who's the new guy? Um, so Chrissy Mayer rated our live stream when me and Beardo were were on. And she was like, Oh, Jay, I didn't mean to derail your stream. And she goes, I feel so bad for the new guy that you have with you that probably has no idea what's going on. <laughs> and so he was like, Chrissy, I met you like three times. Like, you don't remember who I am. And then she was like, Ah, not really. Sorry, I'm pregnant. Like that was that's what she said in the chat. I got pregnancy, bro. That gets you out of everything, I think. Yeah. Um, Brado Jacko for five. ISS backs pelts, but it's designed to be just like Sweet Baby Inc. as a promoter of ESG, climate change, et cetera, which with its stocks and all this kabuki theater. Um, and no, I don't think that everything is a fucking conspiracy. Jesus. Um, you fuck dat bish for one nine nine. <laughs> What's wrong in with subrack keyboard and the fuck does this mean? <laughs> I don't know. Super chair destroyer in GBFE. I don't like the container unit. Oh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Yeah. I don't like the container unit resealed itself magically. It didn't make sense for yeah, me. Yeah, it is a lot. There was a lot of little things that they just cut corners in. Yeah, like the fact that Phoebe's the only one that coded her thing with brass and the only one that's there to fucking take him yeah. down. It's just, yeah, I just didn't like it. Just didn't like it. Anyway, um, accident seller for 20. Nine fab boycott come filled panda for nine. I don't, you are a very, very excited individual. Come filled panda four. Sounds like a sounds like a Vouch fantasy or something. Um or a Chank Chank Uyghur fantasy. But we are pretty much all cut up. We've gone almost two hours. Jay, what's going on with you, man? Uh just working on Acromatic Chronicles Green. Like we're getting ready to launch that in a few weeks. So that is just taking up all my time. Just making sure all that is ready. You know, the artwork and everything, it's gonna be quite interesting to see how this goes <laughs> it's gonna be a little different so 
it's going to be interesting to see. I'm excited for it. I hope people are excited since Blue did so well. And uh, we'll see what happens on this next run. But maybe by the end of the month, maybe by the time you guys get back from Vegas, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll have a launch. So that, that's basically the next few weeks of my life. Then maybe I'll get back to making videos and all that stuff. I need to. All you guys are inspiring me again. So, yeah, I know I said two hours. It's only been one hour. I meant combined with YouTube and Rumble. That's two hours. You know yeah. what I mean? That's obviously what I meant. You guys couldn't figure it out. So, sorry I had to explain it to you. Um, I am going to be doing my normal shit, just fucking videos, videos, videos. Uh, and I think Jay will be back tomorrow. Yeah. I think so. And maybe again on Friday. How's that working? What the heck? Hey, what are you going to do? While you guys are off at Vegas, it might be me. <laughs> are you not going? I will not be in Vegas. No, no, no. It's, it's going to be rough, dude, because it's, it's expensive, number one. And it's also like, I, I would love to go, don't get me wrong. But again, like, I, I got to, like, this, this launch for green has to be good. Like, it's got to be good. It's going to be on Rip Ascend. There's already, you know, it's going to be the first one on that. We'll see how that goes, you know. No pressure. Yeah. It's like we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I it's gonna be tough for those dailies, especially uh on the dailies after the meetups, like the next morning, because it's eight o'clock Vegas time in the morning. Yeah. You guys are gonna try to push through them. Uh I don't Maybe. know what Jeremy's plan is, but that's kind of what I've been thinking. Well, he'll be try, in the try car for like five days. <laughs> Yeah, that fucking retard. That's why I thought you were going with them. I thought you were driving with them. Dude, uh, I did that once driving across the country. Like, it sounds like a fun adventure. Then no, when it you doesn't. Do it, I, it's, it's like I said, it's not, dude. If you told, I'm telling you, Ryan, if you called me after the stream and said, I'm going to drive to Vegas, Jay, would you like to go? Five second decision would be a yes. Because those were freaking yeah, yeah. fun, dude. Yeah. You see, you're smiling. You know what I'm talking about. Man, we stopped at Bourbon Street. We stopped and got like cheese logs and stuff. Like we stopped at. It was crazy actually places. like a miserable trip in a lot of ways. Remember, like my car was overheating. We couldn't have the AC on. Yeah, like, but it was like that was part of the adventure. Yeah, I get that part. But like, it was your first time trying Arby's. Like that was cool. Like I anyway. It was on my first time trying Arby's. No, it was uh, the Mocha Shake. It was the first time oh, trying the mocha, the mocha Shake, shake at Arby's. Okay. Yeah, the let me clarify. Mocha shake or whatever. Yeah, dude, yeah. that was like a fun trip. If you had, if you call and tell me like I'm gonna drive, you want to go? It would take five seconds for me to say yes. That was that was fun. I spilled coffee in your car, all that stuff. So <laughs> like, you're the first person to ride in my new car. Like, it's funny because you were there when the car fucking shit the bed, basically. Yeah, and then the. The new car I get, you're the first person to ride it, and you fucking spill shit in it immediately. Yeah. Just it was great, work. man. That that was a great road trip. So, um, but then I did it with Jeremy and like the crew. It was kind of like whew, that was a rough one. Uh, Elsa Barrett for five. Can you guys raid side scrollers and save me from having to find it myself? Thanks. <laughs> probably probably can't right now because I. I think have you have to, to like, set it up before. Right? You have to set it up yeah. before, it and you have to. I don't know if they have allowed us to raid them. That's it's a really yeah. They got to turn it. it on. So we we can kind of confirm and maybe work that out for the future. But um, but thank you. Go to if you search side scrollers, you'll find it. Um, Zach up to graph for two. We need to bring the professional as for a daily. The professional as. Thank you, Zach. I agree. Um, you can take my spot any day of the week. It, you never know who might pop up on daily. You never know. Um. Let's see. I think we're all caught up. Thank you to people on Rumble. Sorry we had so many fuck-ups over on Rumble early, but uh, it eventually got working. Not our fault, but thanks, Rumble, for fixing it. We will talk to you guys tomorrow with Jay and Jeremy. With Jay and Jeremy. Who knows? Um, all right. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace.